So in our last video for this week, we are going to look at how to do translations on parent functions. So what this means, if you think back to geometry, we did a very short unit on translations. And in you know, spring 2020, we didn't have the chance to really explore this, but you have looked at translations before. So this is the same thing as reflections, shifts, or slides, dilations, those sort of things. And so what we can do is we can actually apply those geometric principles to predicting what different graphs are gonna look at, look like based on the pictures of those parent functions that we were talking about the last couple classes. So the most common form that we use when we're kind of comparing these functions is something called transformation or vertex form. And the reason it happens is because we concentrate on kind of the individual constants, the numbers that we see in our equation compared to our basic parent function equation. And so we've got that transformation form here. So you'll know we have this y equals a with f times b x minus h plus k. And it looks just like a whole bunch of the alphabet soup in here. So keep in mind our typical function is y equals an expression or y equals f of x. So if we take that original parent function and start throwing constants in different places, we can start predicting what those graphs are going to look like. So the first one that we're going to look at is actually the absolute value function. And you can try any of these out that you want. Um, I've included a link to that Desmos graphing calculator. And what I'm actually going to have you do is after you watch this video, I'm going to have you look at an exploration through Desmos as well that's actually going to let you play around um, with those different functions and see what happens when you change each individual value. And seeing what happens with those real time is definitely going to help you start learning about these transformations. The ones that we're looking at today are just translations. They're just slides. So how can we move the graph up, down, left, or right from what the original parent function picture looks like? So here's our first one. So let's look at our absolute value function. So again, what was the picture of that looking like again? And think of the wording absolute value. That was like our V that was stuck in the middle. And we had a critical point sitting right at the origin zero, zero, and it went up to the point one, one, and it went exactly the same distance on the other side of the graph, but again, going up instead of down. And so I can draw this almost little start to the V and just make sure I have nice straight lines on it. Again, this is why knowing these patterns is helpful. If I know the parent graph and I know what's gonna happen to the different graphs if I just start adding a constant in here or there, I can draw these graphs and not even need a calculator to do these problems. So our first function, our first change has this plus two on the end of it. So I want you to think real quick, well, what happens when you add two to something? Well, it increases by two. And so if you think of the fact that we're taking this function that's y equals, and we add a two to each one of those values, well, what happens when you go, when you add a two to a y? Think about it in terms of your y-axis. So if I start at zero on the y-axis versus adding two and going to the two on the y-axis, instead of being at the origin at zero, zero, we're gonna be at two on the y-axis. And so actually having this two on the end ends up shifting or translating our graph up two units. And this is why it's important to know what those, some of those critical points are, because now I can think of the points that are supposed to be on either side. Originally, my point started at zero, zero. So we already shifted that one up to. I had another point at one, one. So if I start at one, one, but then go up two spaces, I'm gonna have a new point at one, three. And the same thing's gonna happen on the other side of the graph. And again, you'll notice I haven't had to plug into my calculator. I haven't had to look at an X, Y chart. I'm just going based off of what I know the shape of the graph is supposed to be. And then just taking those critical points and doing what the equation told me, which was add two onto that answer. Well, if plus two shifted the graph up, what do you think a minus three is gonna do? Again, think in terms of what it would look like compared to the original parent function. So the original started at zero, zero. So if we subtract three, 
And again, thinking about the y direction, we're going to go have to go down three units. So instead of zero, zero, we're going to be down at zero, negative three. Same thing with the other two critical points. So we have one that goes up one over one from that kind of almost origin where we started, and another one that goes up to the left, again, just by one in either direction. So we still have the same exact V shape, the same exact behavior. It's just the whole picture just got shifted down three units. So we can generalize this a little bit. So this is called, if we're going up and down, what's the word for moving up and down? This is actually a vertical shift or vertical translation. So when we have a function f of x and we tack a constant on at the end, so you'll notice we had the absolute value we just tacked on a plus two or tacked on a minus three, all that's gonna do is shift our graph up and down and it's gonna go with our logic. So when k is positive, like that plus two, the graph is actually gonna move up by that number of units, so by k units. But if the number's negative, then that number is going to move the graph down by that same number of units. So if I had a plus five on the end, whatever my parent function is that I start with, it moves up five units. And this is why knowing that parent function shape is important. If you know what shape you're starting with, then all you're having to do is move those critical points that you already know about around on the graph. Okay, so let's look at our second one. We're only doing two types of translations today. Again, I want you to explore a little bit more after this so you can start thinking about, well, what happens when we change those other values? The only other value we're gonna look at today is what happens when we put something actually inside the function. So the parent graph that we're gonna use this with is our y equals x squared. So again, that's our quadratic, that's our parabola. And last time we looked at critical points, same places as the absolute value. The only difference is, even though it had the same critical points, it's kind of curved at the bottom instead of having that very distinct V. And we could go even further if we want to. Technically, we don't necessarily include these in critical points, but overall behavior of the graph, think about you're squaring something. So when we square two, we would end up with a four. If we square negative two, we also end up with a positive four. And again, that just gives us more points that we could use to sketch out our graph. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's where we differ. So we have a negative two in here and we're putting this inside the function. And so this works a little bit differently. When we were talking about tacking on that k value, adding the two on the end or subtracting the three on the end, we weren't modifying the x at all. We were modifying technically the y value of the graph. The whole overall function was getting added to, the result was being added to. But for this, we're actually subtracting these values from the x. So we have to think more of what's our starting coordinate with our x, go to in the negative, and then apply that. This one's a little trickier to think of on your own. So I'm definitely going to encourage you, you know on that next link that I'm gonna have on Schoology, play around with that demonstration and see what happens when you start changing the h value. So when we have an x minus two squared, this is gonna look weird. I'm gonna go backwards. So you would think negative two, if we already did vertical, we're probably doing a horizontal transformation. You'd think negative two goes to the left. It actually moves everything to the right and the whole rest of the graph is gonna be the same. And the reason this works this way is if I think, well, let me change my color on here. So I think if I plug in a zero into my function, so if I was to plug zero into this function, x minus two means I actually need to reference the point that would have been two to the left. So that means two to the left of the origin would have been this guy on the parent function four. And so notice on my new graph, x minus two, I'm not at the origin anymore. I actually have to go up to this four. It's using the point that would have been two to the left. It makes it look though 
like is shifted to the right. So really when I'm thinking about these functions, I almost like to think of it as this is gonna move the opposite direction. It's a little easier to think of it that way. So if the minus two actually moved the whole graph to the right two, what do you think a plus one is gonna do? Well, it's gonna go the opposite direction. So plus one is actually gonna move the whole graph left one. And again, the same behavior happens. So all the rest of the points still have that same kind of relationship. I'm not changing the overall shape of my graph if I'm just doing a translation. <coughs> that would come if we're gonna look, start looking at dilations, which we'll look at in a little bit. Um, that's actually gonna be our next lesson. We'll be talking about that on Tuesday. So again, we would think of, well, x plus one, we really need to take the values from what we had in the x equals one value, which is here. And that's where we end up starting on our graph. Again, it's kind of weird to think of that it kind of goes backwards from what you think, but that's a good way to remember it actually. So your horizontal shift moving or shifting things left to right. So this is horizontal shift. So it's gonna go opposite from what you think. And the way we usually represent it in the function is x minus h. But if you think about that, if I have x minus h, I'm gonna line this up with the x minus two. Okay, well if I ignore those negatives, my h value is two. So I'm moving two, two, the right when I see that x minus h goes backwards from what you think. So when h is negative, that's actually what's going to move it right. And when h is positive, that's actually going to move it left. So again, your good rule of thumb is remember, it's kind of like negative times negative equals a positive. So they cancel each other out. Horizontal shifts end up working opposite. Again, don't take my word for it. So your next activity on Schoology is actually an exploration. It's not something that's graded, but I want you to go in and look at each one of those values. So the way it's set up is you have each parent function is set up and it's gonna have a bunch of what's called sliders underneath. And so if you slide those values, it's actually gonna change what number is being plugged into that equation. And so I want you to experiment what happens when you change each of those numbers. And then when we come back on Tuesday, we're going to put, to put this together. We're gonna to talk about the translations again, and we're gonna start talking about what happens when we do other modifications. So if I go back up to that transformations form, we need to look at all of these constants. All we've looked at so far is what happens when we change the H and the K. What we still need to look at, and we'll look at this on Tuesday, is what happens when we modify this A and the B. So again, play around with it, come to your own conclusions, and we'll practice more of this next week.